Come on, I see fewer. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Looking good. Better than yesterday. Better than yesterday. And, tomorrow. and tomorrow. You will shine. You will shine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Meta, meta. Meta, meta. Sparkle, sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Shiny, shiny. shiny, shiny. Where? Shades. Uh, even though I don't see you with shades. Come on, let's appreciate Jehovah. Are you glad to be in God's house? Yes. Give your neighbor a high five. They sang so well today. Ah, uh, amen. Buenas if you Please be seated briefly. Why don't we appreciate Pastor Edith one more time? She, she brings a lot of joy in the house. We thank God for you. We have one or two visitors we want to acknowledge. Uh, we want to appreciate uh, Reverend Ken Odor, who is in our midst. Amen. Good to see you. Uh, his wife, Abby Karibusana. Amen. And their children. Amen. Amen. Karibu sana. God bless you. Amen. We also want to take time to appreciate Pastor Tim and Macrine who are visiting us. Karibu nyesmameni. God bless you. Amen. And uh, our ambassador from Zimbabwe, always a blessing to have you in the house. Wanas uh, uh, and if you're an honorable member of the kingdom, please tell your neighbor, call me your excellency. Amen. Hallelujah. If they refuse, just ask them again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in God's house, and you are God's excellencies in God's house. Buenas if you will. This month we are talking about what? Open door. Design. What is the sub theme? Blueprint. And today we want to talk about still that theme, but today we want to talk about the treasured design unleashed. And we want to read from the book of John 16, verse 7 to 15. As we do that, I will ask us to stand as we read those. And again, all the visitors, those watching us online, those in the pavilion, wherever you are, we appreciate you for traveling and being with us. Those online, wherever you are, in the, in the entire globe, we have people from all over the globe watching us and Karibu Sana. Uh, we also appreciate those all the way from uh, Ongata Rongai. Buana Sifiwe. God is good. Amen. We're reading a very interesting passage. It is Jesus about to leave the scene, and so he's introducing the Holy Spirit to the disciples. The Bible says in verse 7, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of God. And God's people say, please, we may be seated in God's house. 
Shall we pray? Father, what a blessing to be in God's house, to have worshipped, to have praised, to have prayed, to have given, and now to receive your word. And Holy Spirit, this is your servant Ambrose. Open his mouth and speak through him what you want us to receive. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Lord, let this treasured design become a reality to us today. All glory goes back to you because we have prayed in Jesus' name. And God's people say it. As I start, I just want to make this statement. Don't try too hard. So tell your neighbor, don't try too hard. Uh, tell the other neighbor, don't try too hard. Uh, and then tell the neighbor who ignored you. Tell them, don't try too hard to ignore me. <laughs> you know, one of the things we don't want to have is Christians who are trying so hard that they are missing the point. They are trying so hard. They have been given standards to meet, and they are not meeting them. They are trying too hard. And I want to say in Jesus' name, God did not save you to try too hard. One has fewer. God did not save you to do what? To try too hard. I think this religious mindset that we have been given sometimes make us really struggle and we don't enjoy our Christianity. Let me tell you this. Jesus did not save you so that you could enjoy your salvation in heaven. Let me speak to some people on this side. Jesus did not save you so that you could enjoy your salvation where? In heaven. You are supposed to enjoy your salvation where? On earth. The Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so today, I just as I talk about the Holy Spirit uh, and the reason why he was given, he was given to, her, to us so that we don't try too hard because he is our helper. And when you're given a helper, you don't decide that you're going to play very hard and do your best, and yet he's there. Many times also we have a very religious mindset about the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you this, the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. Amen? It's like who? Like Jesus. And so Jesus has come, but Jesus is saying, I will pray the Father, he'll give you another counselor. So let me read these verses in the Amplified Version, but let me read from John 14. I read from John 16. Let me read from 14. The Bible says this. One more time, tell your neighbor, don't try too hard. The Bible says he will. Um, chapter 14, I want to start around verse uh, 14. Okay, John 14, 14. Let's pick it from there. The Bible says, if you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. And then he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you what? Another helper. Now this helper, the word helper, comes from the word parakletos. Parakletos is a Greek word. Parakletos. Broken in two words. Para and kletos. So tell your neighbor, he's saying para and kletos. Hallelujah. I hope if you're from Muranga, you can say the words well. <laughs> uh, Parakletos. Uh, para means alongside. 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 Kletos is a Greek word that, in another way, we say kaleo. Now, kaleo is not a Kalenjin word. But as if it's a Greek word, kaleo, simply meaning to call. And so in English, the way we write it is C-A-L-L, -L, to call. In Greek, they say K-A-L-E-O, kaleo. 
It means to call. So you have para, kaleo. So when you bring the two words, is to call alongside. That's why in mathematics, when you have two parallel lines, para means alongside, lel means a line, so it is a line that is called alongside another line. I'm helping some people who failed mathematics. <laughs> not because you did not understand, your teacher did not know how to explain. One as if you were parallel. Now another word for para is the word parachute. Parachute, a shoot, uh, is that thing uh, that covers you, it's a shoot. And so parachute, uh, is that parachute you know that when you jump out of a plane, as you are coming out, you pull it out and it comes alongside you and brings you safely on earth. Are we nyitaring this? Nyitaring is a Hebrew word that means to catch. <laughs> All right, so parash, parakleo. Because I want you to understand these Greek words because sometimes we read the Bible and we just see helper but that helper means the one who was called alongside you. And I will ask the father and he will give you another helper. I'll not talk about another because another is another Greek word which is very key. Uh, it's the word alos. Alos, because you have two words. You have heteros and alos. Are we together? Hetero means another of a different kind. Alos means another of the same kind. So Jesus is saying, I am going to give you another helper like me, exactly like me. Are we together? And so when you have the Holy Spirit, it's like having who? It's like having Jesus. And sometimes we say, oh, I wish Jesus was with us. I wish, I wish he was the one here. Uh-uh, you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus. And now the word parakletos in the Amplified is expanded. These are the words. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he's also called comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. It's like standby generators. Are we together? And so when electricity goes off from the main line, the generator kicks in. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is your standby generator. He is your strengthener. He is your helper. And I'm saying this, don't try too hard. Your helper is alongside you. Are we together? Enjoy. Enjoy your salvation here on this planet. Enjoy it. Don't fight the devil on your own. Hallelujah. Don't fight the devil on your own. The Holy Spirit is with you, alongside you. He knows where the Holy Spirit will come from. You know, many times, again in our religious mindset, when we are fighting with the devil, and you know, you hear how people pray during the Keshas, Father, Nashika Shaitani, Namuingiza kwa gunia, Namueka kwa reli, Akanyangwe nagari. Of course, the person who is laughing at you is the devil. Because number one, you cannot put him in agonia. He's a spirit. Huh? And so the Holy Spirit knows which direction he's coming from, and he will help you. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to struggle in your marriage. The Holy Spirit is there. You don't have to struggle in your finances. The Holy Spirit will show you what to do. He'll give you ideas, innovative ideas. He's the creator. He was there in the beginning. The Bible says, the spirit hovered upon the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So what we are saying is this. Allow the Holy Spirit to be a helper. Again, in our religious minds, and I'm just reminding us, you know, some of us have a, a very funny idea about the Holy Spirit. And it's because of some churches you have gone to and places you have gone to. You don't realize the Holy Spirit is actually a person. He hears, he talks, he counsels, he strengthens. He is your advocate. He will speak for you when there is a case. Are we together? So don't forget that picture you have of those churches, uh, uh, Dini Amsambwa or Dini Akiroho, where people are hitting drums. Kudu, 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 
could do. And suddenly somewhere, a lady says, yeah, 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 yeah. And somebody says, I'm a fika, Holy Spirit, I'm a fika. The Holy Spirit is here. My friend, that's not a Holy Spirit. That is just a lady who is overexcited. Hello? And that is why, especially men, do not want to receive the Spirit. Anytime you hear Pastor Ambro saying, now we are going to invite the Holy Spirit. Men, especially. Wamejishikilia, <laughs> siyanguki. Na sipigi mayoye. Hello? But that's the wrong idea of the Holy Spirit. The men are the people who need the Holy Spirit most. Why are you laughing? <laughs> men need a helper. More than the one, the Bible says, it is not good for man to be alone. I'll give him a suitable helper. We need the Holy Spirit. And let me not say about men only, I'm saying all of us. All of us. All of us. And that's why Jesus was praying. I will pray the Father. He'll give you the advocate. The strengthener. Uh -huh. So don't try too hard. Now why? Why this counselor? The Bible says he will lead you into all truth. What is this truth? The truth is that God has a treasured design. And God wants to design it. But the person who is actually to, going to build that design is the Holy Spirit. Architects put things down. They know everything. But there's a builder, there's a contractor who comes and puts the, that picture into reality. And I want to say the person who's going to put a picture of the design of God into reality is none other than the Holy Spirit. Now, let me go and then go to the next step here and let you tell you this. This treasure... Uh, treasure is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor the treasure is Jesus Christ. Let me read Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says this, Colossians 2, 3. Very wonderful verse here. It says, in whom, that is Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of of wisdom and what? And knowledge. Let me read another verse. John chapter 1 verse 16. The Bible said that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and then the word was God. And then the Bible says this in verse 16. Out of his fullness, out of this treasure, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Now let me read this verse in the Amplified Version. It comes out so well. It says this, for out of his fullness, the abundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. In other words, Jesus has so much treasure he is so rich, and God is saying, now you have received of this treasure. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are rich. Because the treasure is where? Is it in heaven? Where is it? It's inside you. Now let me read this so that I can prove to you the way the treasure is. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says this. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this precious treasure, the good news about salvation, in an unworthy earthen vessels of human frailty, so that the grandeur and the surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God and his sufficiency uh, and not from ourselves. Now let me read that in the NIV. It will come out smoothly. Kidogo. Here it says this. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. And that is why it goes on to say this. 
We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Now, look at your neighbor one more time and tell your neighbor, I am rich. I, am rich. I have God's treasure in me. And I want you to believe that. Even though you don't feel it, I want you to believe it. Even though you're not experiencing it, I want you to believe it. And I want to use the life of Daniel to show you three things. So let me put that on the screen for you. These are the three things that the Holy Spirit is trying to release and unleash in your life. Number one, kingdom excellence. Number two, supernatural encounters. And number three, unstoppable favor. Number one, these are the treasures. Kingdom excellence. Number two, supernatural encounters. And number three, unstoppable favor. So one more time, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I have kingdom excellence. I have kingdom excellence. Tell your neighbor, in me, supernatural encounters are happening. In me, supernatural encounters are happening. And then tell your neighbor, I have, I have unstoppable favor. Now, Daniel is kind of a picture of what God is trying to say. So giving us an Old Testament picture to tell us that in the New Testament we can have that experience. So it's not about just the Old Testament. God is saying, look at this, and then look at this. See what I did then. Now see what I can do now. Buenas if you Daniel was a very interesting person. He was a young man, Pastor Simon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were his friends. They were relocated from Israel and they were transported to Babylon. And they stayed in Babylon for nearly 70 years. And while they're in Babylon, they had four regimes. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. And while in Babylon, though they wished they could go back to Israel, God put them in Babylon for a purpose. I want you to know today, Israel can be the church, and Babylon can be the marketplace. And after this service, when you pass through that gate, you will have left Israel and gone to Babylon. In Israel, there are hallelujahs. In Babylon, there are no hallelujahs. The marketplace does not care whether you say hallelujah. And many times we know how to live our Christianity in church, but after we pass that gate, we don't know how to live our Christian life. Monday for some people is a very difficult day because they don't know how to live in the marketplace. They don't know how to bring their Christianity into the marketplace. But God is saying, you have to live in the marketplace. You have to be in Babylon, and you need to let your light shine in Babylon. And so these men were brought into Babylon, and they spent their lives with the Babylonians who never knew God, who worshipped idols, but they still let their light shine. The Holy Spirit is then the one who is able to help you here, and you don't have to try too hard. Don't try too hard to convince people to get saved. Don't try too hard to let your light shine. Just let it shine. One has a few. Just let it shine. Of course, the environment is not conducive. But let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit is able to work in you exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask or imagine. So let me give you some examples how Daniel managed to do that. Number one, he had kingdom excellence in him. After Nebuchadnezzar, there was a son of Nebuchadnezzar called Belshazzar who really didn't care about the things of God. And so his story is in Daniel chapter 5. So let me read a few verses in Daniel chapter 5. This was a man of the world. No hallelujahs. He did not care. Now listen to this story. Very nice. Beginning with verse 1, please. Daniel 5, 1. It says, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. 
So let me repeat that again for us. Tell your neighbor, wine is not orange juice. And tell your neighbor, wine is not Ribena. Now go back. Remember, this is not a church person. This is a person of the world. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. In brackets, when you're talking about wine, in brackets, just put there uh, whiskey and cognac <laughs> and the rest. Now don't look at your neighbor innocently. <laughs> Hello? So this is a man of the world. And remember, Daniel is working in that government. He's working in that environment. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his, wife, his father, had taken from where? The temple in Jerusalem. In other words, this guy just didn't care about the things of God. So that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold of the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. God decides he's going to intervene in this party. Party! Party! God shows up. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Can you imagine? How do you talk to people like that? Suddenly, tell your neighbor, suddenly. The, finger, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. And the king Belshazzar got so shocked. Huh? The king watched the hand. Now the hand is not a, a nobody standing there. There's just a hand. Mpaka hapa ivi. And it is writing something. Huh? The Bible says he got so shocked. I think he felt maybe I've drunk too much wine. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. The king summoned the enchanters. Now these are the people who surround him. Enchanters, astrologers, diviners. Then he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing, now, he didn't say it the way I'm saying it. Whoever reads these writings and tells me <laughs> what it means to be clothed, huh. what animal is it? Whoever drinks this. Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain in place around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. Then thank God for the queen. Tell neighbor, your neighbor, thank God for the queen. Now, this queen was the mother of Belshazzar, the wife of Nebuchadnezzar. This is what she says. The queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. Then he said something that is so, so important. There is a man in your kingdom. Oh, we are in the marketplace, but there is a man in your kingdom. Oh, your working place is so terrible, but there is a man in your kingdom. Yes, in your social setting, things are top stubby, everything is upside down, but there is a man. I pray that somebody in that marketplace can testify and say, we are going through such a big challenge, but in this organization, there is a man. There is a woman. Uh, listen to what he says. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom. Like that of the gods, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians. Can you imagine? He was chief over these astrologers, magicians, enchanters, astrologers, 
You know, he did this because Daniel, whom the king called Belshazzar, was found to have a keen mind. Tell your neighbor, keen mind. Keen mind. Uh, go back, go back, go back there. A keen mind. Uh, he, was, he had a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams and explain riddles and solve difficult problems. Call for who? I pray that somebody can call for you. I pray that the United Nations can call for you. Amen. I pray that this government can call for you. Amen. And say there's a man, there's a woman who have a kingdom excellence spirit in them. And let me tell you this, the Holy Spirit who is a treasure in you, he will make it happen for you if you give him the chance. Oh, if you give him the chance. Uh, li listen, it goes on to say this, and he will tell you what the writing means. This is the queen testifying. The next verse says this, So Daniel was brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel, one of the exiles? My father the king brought from Judah. Uh, he's looking down on him. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. And the wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now, I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you'll be clothed in purple and have gold, a gold chain around your neck, and you'll be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself. If it was me, I thank God I'm not <laughs> Daniel. Uh, at you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, look at his attitude. I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Your majesty, the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. And then he goes on to tell him the story, but at the end of the day, he interprets the dream. He had a kingdom excellence in his heart. And I believe that where you are, where you sit, don't look down on yourself. There is treasure in you. I'm saying there is treasure in you. There's a kingdom spirit in you. Hallelujah. And you're able to solve riddles, things that are challenging others. If you ask the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will take what is mine and give it to you. He will reveal it to you. Remember the verse that says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, the heart has not conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And then he says, and he has prepared and he has revealed them to us by his spirit. But many times we want to do things ourselves. We want to, to, to find understanding by our own. But let me tell you this, God wants you to allow the Holy Spirit to help you know what you have. You have more than what it takes. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I have treasure in me. You see, God wants you to showcase the heavenly treasure that is inside you. You have an excellent spirit. But very quickly, these guys in Babylon also had supernatural encounters. And I want to tell you this, in, in this season and in this world, there are people in the marketplace that cannot just understand the gospel just by you telling them, Jesus came, he died, he rose again, now you need to get saved. There are people in the marketplace who don't care about that. These people have experienced supernatural encounters. There are people in the marketplace who have in their offices big snakes. And they feed the snakes. And they talk to those snakes. And those snakes become doorways to spiritual encounters. They go to witch doctors. They have seen their sicknesses healed by witch doctors. Of course, in their process of going there, they are seriously embarrassed. Ask some of, the, some of the witch doctors, some of their clients. You find that some of their clients are bishops. Because their bishops have lived a life without supernatural encounters and they want something to happen in their church. They want their congregants to grow. They want money to build buildings. They go to Amganga, to this witch doctor, and they are told, now the power will come 
but bring this black chicken, black goat, and come shed blood, walk naked. A whole bishop. And in the process, the experience of supernatural things begin to happen. But let me tell you this. It's because we have denied the greater supernatural. There is a greater supernatural. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego encountered a spiritual encounter, supernatural encounter in the land of Babylon. That is found in chapter 3 of Daniel. So let me go to Daniel chapter 3 very quickly. Because Nebuchadnezzar wanted to be worshipped and a decree was sent out that nobody should be worshipped but Nebuchadnezzar. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused. Now listen to verse 16, Daniel 3, 16. The Bible says this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. Can I hear an amen? amen. You see, God is able. These were three boys who understood the God of the supernatural. Huh? And then he says that if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will do what? He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But look at verse 18. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God, of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar saw something supernatural. He leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, suddenly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. I'm telling somebody here, the fourth man is with you. Yeah. I'm saying there's a fourth man in your life. Huh? And even when you're thrown into a fiery finance or financial challenges, the fourth man is in the furnace. Fourth man is in the furnace. When your deal that was so key falls down and doesn't come through, there's a fourth man. When the debts are piling up until you do not know what to do and they are choking you, there is a fourth man in the furnace. Hallelujah. There is a fourth man. I'm saying there's a fourth man. And you know we say number four stands for what? Four stands for what? Mesao. Four. Number four stands for what? Let me tell you. A door. Door. Do, the alphabet, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Delet. The fourth alphabet means the door. There is an open door. The Bible says no temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you tem be tempted beyond your strength. But with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape. That you may be able to do what? To endure it. There's a fourth man. Tell your neighbor there's a fourth man. That fourth man is what Jesus said. I will send you another counselor, another comforter. He will find ways to get you out of very difficult situations and circumstances. Let me finish that. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high. You know, now he's the one testifying. He's the one saying, servants, I pray that somebody in the marketplace will testify about you. Amen. Come on, let's give God a big hand. Amen. 
Right now, the marketplace is the one making comedy for over us. In the marketplace, the church are the comedians. Hello? Because we are not letting our light shine. Nobody in the marketplace sees believers as serious people. They don't have excellence, and they have never experienced supernatural encounters, and they're the comedians around the city, around the estate. But let me tell you this. Not those from Parklands Baptist Church. You are a different breed. I'm saying you're a different breed. I'm hoping you're a different breed. I believe you're a different breed. By the way, do you believe you're a different breed? Can you say it with confidence? The world is waiting for your light to shine. The world is waiting for you to be the salt of the earth. But let me tell you this. May God give you supernatural encounters. May you see God beyond just black and white papers. May you see God. I'm saying may you see God. May you see God. I remember one time a lady came and she, she called, said, Pastor Ambrose, Pastor Ambrose, pray for me because she was about to, to give birth. But the child in the womb, the, the umbilical cord had gone around the neck of this baby. They didn't have to, didn't need to, have, didn't, didn't need to do cesarean and all that. It was a complicated issue. And she comes and says, Pastor Ambrose, please pray for me. Now, I'm not a doctor. Tell your neighbor that is true. Hallelujah. Now what do I do? What, what do I depend on when a prayer request like that shows up? What do you think I did? I prayed. I prayed to who? To God. Now I know sometimes even for Christians, them, they want to pray powerful prayers. You know how you come to pastors and Reverend Ken, I know some people have come to you and say, Reverend Ken, please pray for me a powerful prayer. Don't just pray for those kawaida prayers. Eh? Pray the prayers that Pastor Edith prays. <laughs> Hallelujah. Powerful yes. prayers. And so now you put a pastor uh, on the corner, and the pastor now, though he doesn't feel powerful, he, he's pushed to pray powerfully. Even there's no power in him. Father. <laughs> Father. At that particular time, he doesn't know what to say. Father. Oh, Father. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and I threw my demons. Hmm. And I'm going to come, na come. He's trying to gather power. When he's praying, he's not just praying at the soft like Pastor Ambrose. He, he has to... My dear, there is power. I'm going to pray a powerful prayer. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't try praying powerful prayers. <laughs> Have you ever seen a car passing in Westlands? <laughs> Now, that is a powerful car. But it is a Volkswagen going at 60. That's as fast as it can go. And suddenly, beside it, another car passes, not making any noise. I'm a Mercedes, I don't know which class. So this pastor is having powerful prayers. Oh, powerful prayers, my friend. Listen to me. Don't pray powerful prayers. Just pray to a powerful God. Yeah. There is a powerful God in the house. Yeah. Don't try too hard. So I prayed for this lady. Not those powerful prayers. Because I could have done that. I would have looked at that lady and said, Now, Father... You know the umbilical cord, don't you? <laughs> and in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm speaking to that umbilical cord, and I'm saying, unravel yourself from that neck. Nah. <laughs> and you have not heard me. I'm repeating myself. <laughs> hmm. 
It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Christians are good people. <laughs> you know, one day we'll get to heaven, Pastor Simon, and God will rewind for us all the comedy sessions <laughs> that we pastors did in church. The angels will laugh, will laugh. Everyone can Pastor Simon. But let me pray. Let me say this as I close. I'm saying this. So I just said a simple prayer. I said, Father, in Jesus' name, turn this situation around. Amen. And that's what it is. That's what it is. It was that, that was it. That was it. In 24 hours, how that baby turned, how that umbilical cord turned, and the child was placed in the right position, only God can do that. <laughs> only God can do that. Only God can do that. That's the supernatural encounter. Somebody sent me a testimony the other day and said, by the way, Pastor Sai Ambrose, when you were praying last week and you said that God whispered in your ear and said that in three days you're going to have your miracle, this lady says, it didn't take three days. That same day, she had been asking for financial help for a school she had. And the next day, somebody called her and said they were going to assist. By Wednesday, they had written her a check of 100,000 Kenya shillings. And she was depositing that money in Jesus' name. Let me tell you this. Ambrose did nothing. God is the one who does those things. Supernatural encounters. Tell your neighbor, supernatural encounters. And they just don't happen when Ambrose is praying. They happen when you are praying. Yes. You are praying. So stop those powerful prayers. Now start praying to a powerful God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or imagine. Let me tell you this. Now that situation was changed because those boys came out of the furnace. And the Bible says they testified that not even a hair was smelling. If God could even register that our hair was not singed, only God can do that. And do you know what? Nebuchadnezzar put a decree and a declaration and gazetted it that nobody should be worshipped but the God of Israel. Amen. Amen. Let us rely on supernatural encounters. You are created for signs and wonders. Bonus, if you so I'm saying there's a sign and a wonder that is coming your way this week. I'm talking to somebody. There's a sign and a wonder that is coming your way this week. There is a suddenly that is coming your way this week. It is not man-made. It is God-made. It is not man-designed. It is God-designed. What God can do, no man can do it. Are you willing for God to do that for you? Yes. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. Take it in Jesus' name. Yes. A supernatural encounter. But let me finish by talking about Daniel in chapter 6. Tell your neighbor, there is unstoppable favor coming your way. Do you remember the story of uh, Daniel in the den of lions? Remember that story? Do you know why he was thrown into the den of lions? Huh? You do? If I called you here, can you tell us? Who said yes? Where's, where's the yes? Now don't look down. <laughs> but so that I may not embarrass you, let me read this and tell you and then we tie it up. Daniel 6 verse 1. Daniel got promoted. Now listen. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them. One of them was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his ex exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. You know, if you have, a, if you have a, an excellent spirit, favor will follow you. Let me read that same verse in the New King James Version. It says this, verse 3 only. It says this. Then this Daniel distinguished himself 
above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was where? In him. Tell your neighbor, I have that spirit. And that spirit will bring favor in your life. And for Daniel, there was a lot of favor until his um, office mates became envious. Let me tell you this. When God starts blessing you, your neighbors will envy you. They will look for ways to bring you down. And I'm telling you, they created an njama, njama, yani, yani plot, to bring Daniel down. But let me tell you this. When God is in you, it doesn't matter who does what. This God will always bring you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen a ball, Mpira, that has air in it? If you take that ball and go to a swimming pool and push that ball inside, what will happen? The ball will come up. Why? Why? There's air in it. Let me tell you this. You have an excellent spirit in you. It doesn't matter who puts you inside. You'll always pop up. Tell your neighbor, I'm popping up. I'm popping up from my financial stress. I'm popping up for en from, from envious people. Tell your neighbor, I'm popping up from haters. Hallelujah. Popping up, but woe unto you if the spirit is not in you. They will put you in and you will go but let me tell you this. Don't try too hard. Paracletos is inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside you. And this guy was, was so envious. They planned, put a plot. Darius was able to agree about it. He signed it and guess what? This person that the king favored now was found in a very unfavorable position. He was thrown into the den of lions. But look at verse 20 of that story as we conclude. It says this in verse 20. When the king came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the most of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you? Can you see that testimony? From a person who doesn't know God. But he saw this man. And this man served God continually. And it's the king speaking. Has he been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel. And he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him. You may be going through such depression, such stress, such oppression, but you're coming out with no wound. You're coming out with no wound in Jesus' name. You're coming out with a clear mind. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. No wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. At that time, the king's, at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel, ah, this, this, this part when I read it, I feel sad. Because the people who are against you, the things that God turns around against them, is so bad, it is too much. Now listen, at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den. What makes me sad is this, along with who? With their wives and who? Let me say something to you. If you're one of those people who plot, the plotters, against other people, you may not be hurt, but your wife and your children and the generation to come, they will be judged so seriously. You will wish you had never plotted. Don't go that route. Forgive and go your way. Don't retaliate. Don't return evil for evil. These plotters, I really feel for the wives and the children because they suffered for something they never did. Along with their wives and children, and the Bible says, and before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them 
crushed all their bones. Then Darius, King Darius, wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth. Uh, by that time, they were writing. But today, with the internet, it would have actually gone much faster. This is what he said. May you prosper greatly. May you have unstoppable favor. I'm talking to somebody. May you have unstoppable favor. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, some of you have gone through a very rough time a couple of years back and things are still turning around pole pole, but today I'm saying they will accelerate. Amen. I'm talking to somebody, I'm saying they will accelerate Amen. in Jesus' name. You have unstoppable favor coming your way. He issued a decree, in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. And he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. May this be your portion. May this be your portion. I'm saying may this be your portion. Amen. May you prosper this week. Amen. May you prosper this week. Amen. May doors open for you that no man can shut. Amen. Why? Because Paracletos has come inside you, given you kingdom excellence, given you supernatural encounters, and given you unstoppable favor. Let the Holy Spirit do his work Amen. in your life, Amen. starting now. Amen? Now stand on your feet. Is there a lady in this church called Juliet? Maybe you're in the pavilion. But is there Juliet in this church? God is locating you with unstoppable favor. Is there Juliet here? Huh? You better show up. Juliet? Is there Juliet? I'm looking for a Juliet. If you're online, Juliet, listen to me. Where? Oh, come, come here. This one is in-house. If you're online, let me say this in Jesus' name. God is opening your doors. In Jesus' name. Hi. How are you? You're also Juliet. Come here. Now listen to me. I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if you're in the fire or anything. I know you have not been in any physical fire. But God is picking you out because he wants to give you a supernatural lesson. Yeah. A supernatural lesson. One of the things God is saying is this. Stop trying too hard. Stop trying too hard. You're, you're messing up his work. He wants to do his design without interruption, but you're interrupting him. And I'm talking to you, Juliet, online, and in the pavilion if you're there. Don't try too hard. Uh, God is saying, this thing in your life is an easy thing for me. So leave it in my hands. Leave it in my hands. Because you will have a testimony. And you will glorify God's name. Because he will turn your situation around. Are you, are you hearing me? You are Juliet who? Who? Or Moshe. 
Wamoshi ama wamoshe? Wamoshi. Kama smoke. Eh. Kwa nyumba moshie. 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 Juliet. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you ask or imagine. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it is in the, in the marketplace. I don't know if it is in your education. Whatever it is at home, that fire will not consume you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. Your, Juliet, what's your other name? Hmm? Achien. Moshe Achien. Now listen to me, Juliet. Stop struggling. Stop fighting. The Most High God holds you in His hands. Holds you in His hands. And He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask or imagine. Are you receiving this? You better receive it by faith. This is Ambrose talking to you. This is God picking you out. And this is God saying, don't fight it. Don't fight it in Jesus' name. I'm saying to you, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Baba Wambingo Nosha Kono Ako Watu Stretch your hands here. Let's pray for uh, these wonderful ladies. And I want you to know, he who began a good work in you, Juliet, will do much more. Will do much more. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him in Jesus' name. And I'm talking to you. Don't try too hard. God is fighting your battles. The Holy Spirit is with you. You're coming true. You have an excellent spirit. God is your supernatural encounter. Trust him. You will prosper. You'll be promoted. This fire will not burn you out. You are not going to drown. You'll pop up again. In Jesus' name. Father, as we stretch our hands to these lovely girls, blessing them in Jesus' name, we lift up Juliet Wamoshe before you. We lift up Juliet Acheng. We lift up any Juliet in the house and online. And we want to pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, because you have located them, may favor find them. May favor promote them. May favor unleash them to be lights in the world, to shine. It doesn't matter what kind of fiery furnace they are in, but God, even their hair will not be singed. They are coming out clean. They will not be wounded in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you because not only have you heard this prayer, you have answered it. And if you believe it, you better say, I receive it. I take it. It is my portion. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Now give God another big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now it's okay. You can go down with them. Thank you, ladies, for being here with us. Now look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, this is my word. I have received it. How many of you expect supernatural encounters this week? Yes, I receive it. Uh, and it may not be in such so much drama. It may, it may come so silently and so easily. It will blow your mind. Uh, that loan will go through 
without too much hassle. God is able to do things that you have never been done because nani kama Mungu? Ah, cheza kama nani? Kama yeye. Bwana asifiwe. Yeye ni nani? The most high God. If you believe that, you better give God a very big hand. Somebody is coming back with a testimony. I'm saying somebody is coming back with a testimony. And that is you. In Jesus name. One of the parks in our bookshop that I would recommend you get is this one, Open Door Park. Please get yourself a copy. Those who are visiting us, we still have our theme visions at the bookshop. Uh, please just connect with these items and the Lord will richly, richly bless you. Did you learn something today? Yes. Amen. Now I want to release us. Lift your hands as I command this blessing. Our visitors, Karibuni, at our, at our center there for a cup of tea. Father, in the name that is above every name, I decree and declare to your people, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord do you good. May the Lord bless you when you come in. May the Lord bless you when you go out. I decree and declare to you that your Monday is blessed. Your Tuesday is blessed. Your Wednesday is blessed. Your Thursday is blessed. Your Friday is blessed. Your Saturday is blessed. And Sunday, I'm telling you, you're coming back with a testimony. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This much we are saying, you're marching into your miracle. May that be your portion. May that be your portion. So receive it in the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. Another hand to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five. And tell them, thank you for sitting next to me. And tell them I might just be sitting next to a billionaire. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are favored to be favorable. You are lifted to lift others up. That is your portion. And nobody is taking it from you. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. There is treasure in us as we shine our light for the glory of God, who is our Heavenly Father. A timely and powerful message we have received from our senior pastor, Reverend Ambrose Nyangao, this being the month of Open Door Design, Uplifted Kingdom Blueprint, that we are walking into doors of kingdom excellence, supernatural encounters, and unstoppable favor. Indeed, that is our portion both here and forevermore, even as we shine our light in the marketplace. Just to remind you, continue to share your testimonies and my testimony at parklandsbaptist.org for indeed we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Keep on engaging with our e-bulletin available on our website. For those who are here for the in-service um, service, we have our Caribou Center for first-time visitors 
visitors, our Connect Tents for so many activities that are coming up for our men, our women, our children. Indeed, continue to plug in for the services that are running out throughout the week. Wednesday, our early bird service from 5 a.m. In the evening, we have our prayer service from 6 p.m. Sunday, as our senior pastor has put it, we are coming back with testimonies for indeed we will have a testimony filled week to the glory of our God. I have been your host for today, Fura Washira. Until next time, shalom. <laughs>